Welcome back to the Culling Games Reverse, the series where we take the battle royale between Jujutsu Sorcerers and watch events unfold with completely different outcomes. Our last focus surrounded Tokyo Colony 1, where Itadori Yuji easily cleared Reggie Star and his gang, recruiting both Remy and Takaba on the way. Megami, on the other hand, met defeat at Higuruma's hands. Our current focus surrounds both Akari Kenji and Yuta Okotsu switching roles, both key members of the protagonist protagonist team, their respective victories mark great progress. Had the plan been instead for Okotsu to accompany Panda to Tokyo Colony 2 on the hunt for Angel, the most dangerous player between both colonies, Kashimo Hajime, would have surely encountered the child prodigy. Controversial topic incoming, based on this specific comment by Yuta himself, it is up for debate that Hikari, when his boss music is playing, is stronger than Yuta. Whether or not you truly believe this statement, or just think Yuta was capping out of respect for his senior, we are not looking to get into that topic today. One of the biggest factors in this battle would be exactly how strong is Kashimo. Because to be completely frank, in this timeline, I don't think Okotsu is coming within 10 feet of Otaku Ass Charles. And if he does, well, I don't think it would end up with Charles upset and sitting on the side walk afterwards. Eventually, on the hunt for Angel, who we now know was never even in Tokyo 2, Tengen. Another thing you got wrong, Tengen. Yuta would notice that most of Tokyo Colony's 2 population has been dwindled down to just non-sorcerers at this point. As Panda even brings up in the original timeline, there's nothing around but the smell of blood in the air. Based on Kashimo's point total and brutal introduction, the man has clearly been busy. It's truly a matter of whoever runs into him first. Panda did originally, but as someone who was very good at hiding their cursed energy residue, it may be hard for Okotsu to initially track down. Unless he follows the bodies. Does Panda get broken down and bullied again? Let me know in the comments what you want, and I'll reveal his fate in the next Hikari vs Sendai colony video. Okotsu Yuta and Hajime Kashimo, a duo of hymns, face to face. Based on Yuta's starting point and the fact Hajime has already already eliminated most of the current population, it's well within Okotsu's interest to befriend the reincarnated player. He's worth more alive with 100 points than he is as a 5 point W. But we both know that's not how real Gs operate. To be fair, as we see from his first introductions with Panda in the original timeline, Hajime is always hostile at first contact. If you're a player, you're an enemy, which in a battle royale, fair behavior. So on the grounds of close quarters combat, while we've seen Okotsu keep up with strong hand-to-hand -hand contenders like Itadori Yuji, Hajime has matched and even outperformed a powerhouse like Akari that was a way stronger foe than Yuji at the time. Hajime's physical feats are notable in that he was able to effectively punch a fucking shipping container, and then volley said shipping container back and forth with his opponent. Kashimo was also nimble enough to dodge most of Akari's critical attacks. For a sorcerer without any special upgrades or power-ups, his main advantage advantage here, quite honestly, are his hands. Where in his battle with Hikari, while jackpotted, Hikari all but ignored Kashimo's electrified curse attacks against someone like Okotsu, without natural defense to cursed energy traits, Kashimo's bare knuckle attack power surpasses the child prodigy. Although that same prodigy has been shown to toss an entire car back when fighting Yuji, so despite being physically lacking, his boundless cursed energy does make up for that. Yuta would never be flat outclassed in close quarters either. In his original Sendai timeline, his efficiency against Ishigori Ryu is notable. Even though Ishigori's output level of cursed energy was much higher, Okotsu's quick thinking and versatility kept him in a winning position over the sorcerer. And Heianara Kashimo wasn't even willing to waste his time with Ishigori, something that I do feel holds weight. Hajime, being the aggressive player that he is, probably wouldn't even allow for a brief exchange of dialogue until a proper level of respect has been established between these two fighters. Just like in the Hikari battle, they really only introduced themselves when they reached neutral ground. Hajime going for first blood, attempting to give Okotu the smoke, he'd be surprised when Yuta can actually bring a similar energy. 
Although Yuta would be lower in attack power, where he'd make up for this is his swordsmanship. While Hajime's rod may offer back and forth melee combat, it's not a preferred style for Kashimo by any means. Yuta has been shown to put enough force into his swings to break combat knives, and Kashimo needs to save that rod for a contingency. Okotsu when up against Kurorushi has been shown able to create cursed energy shockwaves with little drain on his tank. So when pushed into a corner, Yuta can definitely surpass Kashimo's limits for brief moments. His boundless amounts of cursed energy should be able to dull the electrifying trait of Kashimo's attacks as well, at least enough for Yuta to remain agile in combat. After exchanging heavy hits and becoming familiar with each other's game, the two players would introduce themselves. However, upon realizing the threat level of Hajime, whether with or without Yuta's will, this fight would become a two-on-one battle. Rika, the special great curse spirit, would partially manifest on the battlefield. Its terrifying aura would send a chill down Kashimo's spine, but the man would tremble from excitement not fear. This is where it must be established how Rika stacks up to a sorcerer like Hajime. Although partially manifested, Rika retains the strength to collapse an entire bridge. Also, restrain a physically powerful foe like Yuji with little to no effort on her own part. Using Rika as insurance, her fists manifesting in perfect angles or openings in Kashimo's combo strings would strike considerable damage into the reincarnated sorcerer. While Yuta can be the speed, Dishing out enough attacks to keep Hajime's attention, Rika's heavy blows can offer finisher opportunities. Once again, it's doubtful Okotsu would really be going for the end game here. An unconscious knockout would suffice, as once again, Hajime is more valuable alive than gone. But Kashimo operates under different philosophy. Take no prisoners. With all the odds against him, definitely not coming out of a two-on-one against the Child Prodigy and the Queen of Curses with any chance of victory. Hajime had his fun, but he needs to end this battle. With every assumption leading him to believe Rika goes if Yuta does too, after some clever positioning, Kashimo would reach out for, quite honestly, his one and only win condition against the Cursed Child. A bolt of lightning, created from the positive charges imprinted on Yuta from Kashimo's attacks, and the negative charges controlled by him personally. An attack that can't miss with no domain required would definitely land on Okotsu without fail. Not just because of its blinding speed, but because of its unpredictability. Yuta has absolutely no way of seeing this coming. As stated before, this is Hajime's one and only way he can get victory on Yuta, and it's only if it lands on his head. Reverse curse technique is directly controlled by the brain. If that isn't taken out with the lightning strike, Okotsu can revive. Able to restore Yuji's heart, regrow body parts like fingers, Okotsu Yuta's reverse curse technique is amplified immensely by his massive stock of energy. Although he can run out, meaning if he's caught once worn down, Yuta could potentially lose all chances of regeneration. Nah. Okotsu Yuta still has his curse technique. With Rika as his storage of latent power and an even larger mass of cursed energy, it's almost as if Yuta carries with him a second life. After this revival, things really don't look good for Kashimo. A fully manifested Rika, who was able to pass attacks back and forth with Ishigori Ryu just on her own, and synchronized Yuta, who now has full access to all of his copied curse techniques and tools. Curse speech, creating Shikigami from his hair? Imagine if he did take out Charles' future sight? What a nice little addition. Although, the orbiting domain and sky manipulation from the OG timeline might be cooler. My point is, Kashimo's only hope is to land a headshot with that lightning bolt attack as early as he can. If not, Yuta, also known right now as Himothy, just has way too many options at his disposal to eliminate Hajime. And considering a battle with Yuta is never a true one-on-one, -on -one, it makes sense why Sendai Colony, a big free-for-all battle between those high-level sorcerers, lasted so long. But as soon as Yuta got Ryu alone, he mollywopped him in seconds. It's unfair how handicapped Okotsu can be in a solo battle. Not even considering this man's domain expansion, innate technique yet to be seen. Kashimo does have Hollow Wicker Basket, as well as his own unknown curse technique that he's saving for Sukuna. But based on how he was willing to just have Hikari take him out instead of using it to pull a last minute W, it doesn't seem like he's going to be wasting it on anybody but the king himself. You do know what would be really cool? If you think Kashimo's electricity isn't some sort of genetic or unique 
unique trait and more so just control of his energy. Technically, Yuta, basically young Goku out here stealing techniques, could maybe copy that control and end the fight copying Kashimo's lightning bolt attack. Head cannon is cool sometimes. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. Hikari and Sendai is next. Like and subscribe on this video so I know you're enjoying the Culling Games Reverse content. If you missed the last two videos, go check them out. Follow up on your Culling Games Reverse lore. Second reminder to leave a like, guys. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.